Welcome to the Bajern Wormhole. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. If you're returning, thanks for the support. In tonight's video, we're going to be discussing the pointless demise of Tasha Yar. Ever since Star Trek hit the small screen, there has been plethora of interesting and layered characters to stem from the universe. Some of these have gone down in history, from the serious Picard to the iconic persona of William Shatner's Kirk and each has been surrounded by an equally well-crafted roster of supporting characters. Some, however, go down in history for all the wrong reasons. Certain characters such as Neelix and Wesley annoyed a large portion of fans. Worse, though, are the ones that had the potential to be great and get unceremoniously swept under the rug and forgotten about. Of these cases, none is so prominent as the Next Generation's head of security, Lieutenant Tasha Yar, and her pointless demise. Lieutenant Yar was played by Denise Crosby and first appeared during Season 1 of The Next Generation. She lasted 22 episodes in the pivotal role of head of security until she met her untimely demise at the globbly hands of a tar monster. The episode, named Skin of Evil, was groundbreaking in many ways. The show's decision to kill off one of its main characters after so long could have been a refreshing take on the semi-immortal cast of protagonists that TV shows had pioneered up until this point. The problem, however, was how they did it. Yar's demise was a brutally and underwhelming and pointless death that came out of nowhere and ended up feeling like a throwaway. The reason behind this mainly lie, unfortunately out of the Star Trek universe and in the uncomfortable realm of behind the scenes politics, Crosby was disheartened and disappointed with her character on the show. She felt that she had been sold on the false promise that she would be a kick-ass female security officer with an engaging backstory. But when it came to shooting, things were different. Yar had a rough outline of a backstory, having grown up on a lawless and abandoned Earth colony called Turkana 4. But other than that, there was nothing concrete or compelling. What made things worse was that, rather than playing a powerful woman in a genre so often dominated by men, she was placed more as an object of desire. Tasha Yar served as candy for the viewers, partnering with the purposefully low-cut and nonsensical uniform worn by Deanna Troy to be the bridge's sex appeal. This was not just down to her having a rather limited role on the show, but also due to the other notable episodes prior to Skin of Evil in which she played a larger role. These include the horribly aged Code of Honor and the Naked Now. These two episodes featured Yar as an object of desire. In the former, she is captured by an alien ruler so she can fight for the right to be his wife against his first wife. In the latter, where she seduces and sleeps with Commander Data under the influence of an alien virus. Both episodes were prime examples of how, instead of displaying empowerment, Crosby was playing a role designed purely for its feminine appeal. All of these reasons made Crosby fall out of love with the show very quickly, and while this was most likely due to the issues in the first season of the show, she could not keep it up and decided to put in a request to terminate her contract. Gene Roddenberry granted this, but seemed to do so begrudgingly and thus formulated a pointless and underwhelming death to a throwaway redshirt character. Thankfully, things started to get better for TNG after Roddenberry distanced himself from the show due to health issues, and after a complete upheaval of writers, Yar got the send-off she deserved. She appeared again during the Season 3 episode Yesterday's Enterprise. During this episode, a temporal rift changes the prime timeline, resulting in a Federation that was still at war with the mighty Klingons, and a Yar that never died. Upon hearing about how her timeline alternate died, she summed up the entire situation perfectly. I died a senseless death in the other timeline. I didn't like the sound of that. I've always known the risks that come with a Starfleet uniform. If I am to die in one, I'd like my death to count for something. The alternate timeline Yar continued and eventually sacrificed herself in order to return the timeline to normal. She died in a way that finally, after all those years, gave the character the death that she deserved. Crosby would return later in a rather convoluted and unfinished plot centered around Yar's half-Romulan daughter, Commander Sela. But this final act of defiance and bravery in the face of great danger was the end of Yar's story. 
it righted the wrongs done to her character by the first season. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.